hey girl hey welcome back to my channel it's your girl misha thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review we are back with a brand new review for love is blind season six episode 10 if you are new here then welcome i give light-hearted reviews with a little bit of laughter and a little bit of shade and a whole lot of detail if you're back for a second or third time then welcome back y'all please don't hesitate to like comment and subscribe to the channel share with a friend hit that notification bell so that you will be updated each and every time i upload a video now child let's get into it if we gonna get into it when the episode first opens up we see jeremy taking his mom out to talk and to lie so he's telling her he went out and he found out that sarah ann was gonna be there and then they talked a good part of the evening a good part of the evening you mean until the wee hours of the morning so he said, yeah, and then I drove her home and then I got home around 530 and I slept on the couch. And then, you know, I told Laura what happened straight up. Sir, you're a straight up lie. Mama said, you lucky it wasn't me. Honey, I know that's right. She said, I would have been sitting there waiting for you. Yes, mama, I would have been sitting right there at that front door, just like Claire and Cliff Huxtable on the Cosby show when Vanessa went to Baltimore to see the wretched and have big fun. <laughs> baby the way i would have been sitting with that couch facing the door as soon as he walked in boom guess who stepped in the room baby it would have been a fool but i like the way laura did it as well she let him talk it out and then she let him lie his way right into her trap but i would have lit him up upon arrival but maybe that's just me so he said you know i didn't really realize that you know i would potentially lose a fiance you need to be alone jeremy it seems like you jump from relationship to relationship according to the tiktok mama said well you always got your dog <laughs> well he's one himself so it's only fitting moving forward chelsea and jimmy so he's taking her to meet the family oh jimmy's family is so down home i hope chelsea don't get to whining about the brisket there's no brisket the way that they have my sauce baby i love you i'm uncomfy girl just eat the damn brisket <laughs> Chelsea finna get on my nerves mm -mm -mm. but aesthetically she looks like she fits right on in honey her and his sister kind of look alike you don't look like Megan Fox you look like Jimmy's sister so the family starts asking what she liked about him and she said that Jimmy painted this most basic life and she's like wow now what now not he painted a basic life oh child so then his mom asked about them having kids because they're both young and she's like I'm 30 mama said oh you're 30 okay Chelsea, this is just a side note, baby. Are you eating quesadillas at this smokehouse? I know you ain't eating quesadillas at this here smokehouse. It better be a brisket quesadilla or something. Girl, you unhinged. You <laughs> Chelsea need to be stopped, honey. Jail immediately. Do you hear me? So Jimmy tells them, you know, that he wanted a relationship and that he wanted a best friend. Baby, they love to throw that out there, don't they? I want somebody that's going to be my best friend. Someone I can tell everything to. Meanwhile, he can't stand her. So then his sister said, well, you know, marriage is hard, right? So what makes you think that you're ready? She said, we communicate so well. Since when? You literally wind your way into an apology. Your communication is trash. It is awful. He said, well, we've had some fights, but no deal breakers. You literally said she's too clingy for you and to keep her hot pocket to herself. What are you? <laughs> what am I watching? What am I watching? She's like, yeah, there have been, you know, a few conversations. He said, yeah, conversations, but not fights. Honey, I cannot with these two. He said there hasn't been a lot that they aren't on the same page about. He said he's been looking for someone like Chelsea that treats him the way that she does. Jimmy, please. Now, he sold it to that mama because that mama ate it up, okay? She said Chelsea and Jimmy got that connection. She knows it. Chelsea has her son's heart. She sees the love. Where is the love? Because I don't see it, okay? I don't see it. Oh, mama, you have been bamboozled, hoodwinked, led astray. Mm, mm, mm. Moving forward. I have to say, Jimmy's family was really sweet as pie, especially that daddy. I love a big jolly daddy. That daddy was sweet. His parents have been together 43 years, and you can tell that the parents are settled. You know those couples who have seen each other through every facet of life? You know, they were young and dipping it and zooming it. Then all of a sudden, they got settled, and they sit there, and they watch Wheel of Fortune, on, on, you know, at nighttime, and they eat on their TV trays and don't say too much and say just enough. 
I like that. She nags. He don't pay her no mind. I love it. A.D. and Clay. So her mom is meeting Clay, though. Before he got there, A.D. was telling her about, you know, this cute date that she had planned and how he didn't come home. Mom said, well, does he work for the CIA? <laughs> I know that's right, mama. Love should have brought you home. You home last night. You should have been with me. And then shout out to Tony. So when Clay walked in, mom was like, let me look at him. Let me see if I'm going to be able to get into it. She was kind of eyeing him a little bit at first. So he was telling her what he does and how he feels bad about his scheduling. So then mom asked what he was looking for. And he said, you know, someone to be my best friend. Okay. He said, and that's AD. Before coming to meet them, he said his mom gave him a verse, which is Proverbs 3, 5. And that's the same thing that he read to AD in the pods, not leaning on your own understanding, but leaning on God. So he starts talking about how, you know, he struggles with his parents, relationship breaking up. And so her mom is like, well, you said they were together 24, 25 years. That's major. Well, also he's struggling because he feels guilty about what he witnessed his daddy do to his mama. It wasn't 25 years of bliss, according to him. He needs to realize that he isn't his dad. Your dad cannot pass down his cheating like a family heirloom. You don't have to pick it up. Okay, it's okay. You are your own person. So her mom is telling him, listen, don't self-sabotage. What your parents did, that's their stuff. Okay, you, you don't have to do that. Okay, what you have is an opportunity to do better than they did. And I love that she told him he was self-sabotaging and to know not to take on his daddy's baggage. Mama was speaking life into both of them. I love that for AD. I really do. I really do love that. She's giving them some advice and telling them that they have to find things to bring them back together because half the time the men don't really be knowing what's going on. And sometimes you got to figure out what's happening and then bring it back so y'all can come back together. The way that they are speaking though, on this 24 year marriage is a far cry from the way that clay described it so her mom said you know i like him i like how he presents himself it ain't perfect but it's perfect he needs to get out of his head that's what he needs to do so then clay gets up and walks away her mom is telling her that she's happy that she met clay sight unseen and not just see him walk saw him walking down the street and was like oh he fine she's happy that they got to really know each other they're talking. AD is telling her mom, you know, she's so happy and grateful that her mom is there aside from Clay. She's just happy that her mom is there to support her. Her mom then says, well, girl, I heard you say something you ain't never said. And you said that you would follow him. Okay, girl, you gonna follow him. AD said, I will follow that man off a cliff without a parachute because I know he'll be there to catch me. Girl, you gonna fall off that cliff straight to hell. Child, did they edit out the qualities that make her want to follow him? Because maybe I missed it. Y'all comment down below. Did I miss the qualities? That might have been a bonus episode. Please tell me if I missed the qualities that make her want to follow him. Please let me know. She said that's how much she trusts him. Mama said, well, did you tell him that? Why don't you start with that? Tell him that. When her mom came around the table and hugged her and spoke so positively to her, that was so special to me. You know, words of affirmation and encouragement from your parents, it just hits different. I just love her mama. Her mama was just all to the good. Do you hear me? I just love everything about AD's mama. I love her. So he comes back to the table. The man that she'll follow. Okay, now mind you, he comes back to the table and she's crying. The man that she'll follow. And he just looking at her and took a sip of his drink. Child. And now mama calling them Barack and Michelle. Okay, now mama, you taking it a little bit too far. Honey, because I don't see nothing about no Barack and Clayto. Amy and Johnny. So he's meeting her dad. And I thought that the dad was going to be mean the way that Amy made it seem that he wasn't going to be so approving. He was actually very pleasant. So Johnny asked for permission to marry Amy and he said, yes, honey, y'all know Johnny and Amy don't give much, but birth control, Chelsea and Jimmy. So it's time for Chelsea to be uncomfy. He's telling her that yesterday was a big deal meeting his family and he feels great. And now he loves her even more, but you cannot have a good moment because here comes Chelsea talking about that's why yesterday i was so cranky i was really cranky he said you can't get cranky with me i was cranky because i was uncomfy girl shut up apparently he went out after filming rap he says that he asked her to come with him she didn't come she says he didn't ask he said yeah you were in the bed all wrapped up mm -hmm, that's the oldest trick in the book you didn't want her to come 
<laughs> you waited till she got under that cover to ask her. You ain't slick. She said, well, the girl from girls from the pods, they were telling me and texting me all night saying they saw you out and they were asking where I was. It was Mackenzie. Why? Why are they asking you where you are? Y'all don't have to be together 24 hours a day. They just being messy. And Chelsea, you like to lie. So I don't know if they told you that or not. You probably was calling around to see who knew who and you figured out Mackenzie was down to that same bar and she told you, yeah, I see Jimmy. He's within earshot. I can see him. Anyway, he said, I came right back. So I don't see the problem. She's like, I don't want to be with someone who goes out and parties. Say like, what? See, this is the clingy that he's talking about. This is it right here. He said he only had one drink and he came home. He said, well, I like to go out socially, like to piano bars or wine bars. Like, I don't just be out in the street, party, 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 list. I'll get wasted. Like, it's not like that. So then she said, well, I don't want to be with you like that because you lied to me in the pod saying that you don't do anything. And there you are in the streets at nine. I'm gone. I'm just so sad. <laughs> Chelsea, shut it the hell up. Jimmy said, listen, I have not been out in three months. She said, well, I turned down my friends. Well, that's you and it's not healthy. You don't need to be attached to him 24 hours a day. That's why he said you give stage five clinger. That's why he said that. So then she says, I love you and I want to be around you and you're not giving me much. He said, what? I literally have not been going anywhere. She said, do you understand the situation that we're in? Because if you don't understand the situation, then we have a bigger problem. He said, I don't understand the situation that we're in. <laughs> I cannot write these jokes. Oh, child, the jokes just write themselves. You're in a situation with a whiny nag. That's what you're in a situation with. I don't even like Jimmy, but I feel bad, honey, that he got Chelsea because all she does is nag and find fault. Calm it down, Chelsea. So now they're going back and forth and forth and back. She's mad. He's with his girlfriends. He's saying, do you want me to not go out with my friends? Is that what you want me to do? She's like, no, I don't want you to go out with your friends. I'm not going to stop going out with my friends. Well, then why did you ask her that? He then walks off saying that his friends ain't going nowhere. They a package deal. She follows him inside and then the truth comes out. She blurts out that he screwed one of the girls that he introduced her to. He said, I only did that once and I told you that off camera. I brought her on camera and here you are. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. As much as Chelsea gets on my nerves being uncomfy, I'm sorry. But you will not be BFFs with somebody you had sex with. It's a hell now for me. Mm-mm. If they have seen your ecstasy face, then they need to exit stage left. And don't you dare introduce me to them. And now y'all hanging out real tough? And you texting her all day long? Oh, no, ma'am, honey. Mm-mm. I would definitely turn into a Chelsea. It's rude. <laughs> absolutely not she's telling him it makes her uncomfortable girl everything makes you uncomfortable everything makes you uncomfortable and everything makes you want to throw up jimmy is mad that she said it on camera chelsea is not for all the hanging out he said that he was with eight frat brothers and their girlfriends she's like i know you were with jess who were you with last night huh who were you with because i know you were with jess ma'am please you're just trying to bait him Jessica was nowhere around that man. She has a whole 10 year old child. I'm pretty sure she was not gallivanting in whatever bar Jimmy was in in the late night hours. Girl, please. He said, no, I was never with her. I don't know what you're talking about. She said, well, I heard you were. No, you didn't. You just want to win this argument. So now you're spinning it and trying to manipulate him and sitting up here making up lies so that he'll be like, okay, 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 okay. Girl, there's nothing going on. He says, no, you're insecure about the Jessica thing. And I have no idea what she even looks like except the picture that Jeremy sent me. Oh, so you didn't say she looked like a Kardashian? Ooh, way Chelsea is insufferable. He said, no, I said, Jeremy said that she looked like a Kardashian in the gym. So then he's like, no, you're fishing. That's what you're doing because you don't even have an explanation for this. So then she starts with those fake tears, honey, because she ain't got nothing else. So she gets to crying, giving, giving them care and tears. There's not anything even coming from your eyes, Chelsea. She's like, I just question what I've done. Like, I don't want to be with someone who goes out. Like, I don't even feel like you love me. I don't even know what is going on. Jimmy, run far and run fast. You better run forest, run forest, run. You better get out of there because it's going to be a fool. He said, you know, this really changes how I feel too. 
And if you think everything that I say is BS, then I don't want to be with you either. This is the dumbest fight ever. It was one hour, Chelsea. You need to grow up and seek counseling. After he said that he didn't see no future with her either, here she come. Don't leave. I love you. Stop it, Chelsea. Just stop. So then he tells her, no, you overstepped my boundaries. What did I tell y'all? Fighting it and then fighting it. 12 days until the weddings. A.D. and Clay. So they're at home. He's talking to her about her wedding dress shopping. He then starts talking about how his dad cheated year seven of the marriage. And he's worried because he doesn't feel mature enough for marriage. He watched, you know, older episodes of Love is Blind and he's comparing himself to those men. Clay is not ready. He is trying to talk himself out of it. AD, you better listen. She's like, well, I know what I want and I'm not afraid, but it takes two of you to be in a marriage, honey. So then he says, well, why does the date matter? Like, why do we have to get married right then? Like, why does the date matter? She said, you know, I'm okay if you give me a yes or a no at the altar. I'm fine with that. She wants to honor the timelines because they, sh they signed up for the experiment and whatnot. But she said, I'm not going to continue to date you after if you say no. He said, well, I'm not ready to lead or I'm not confident enough to lead. Well, honey, leave, leave it up to her. She said she's going to follow you. So if you're not confident enough to lead, then where exactly are you following him, A.D.? And he is telling you. So don't be surprised when you get him and then he doesn't act accordingly. You cannot force him to be ready. And a side note, baby, you look so pretty in this scene. So fresh faced and pretty. I say, look at A.D., just as pretty as she want to be. She's like, no, I'm not afraid. You just need to, you know, get, with, I just need to lead you right now. Okay, you just need more of me right now. A.D. really wants this fairy tale. A.D. really wants this fairy tale ending. But baby, it's not going to be Clay D. It's not. It's not. Clay needs to work on himself before he can lead you anywhere. There's nowhere that he could lead me. We could even play follow the leader. Absolutely not. Chelsea and Jimmy. So they're coming face to face again after the little blow up that they had the other night. He said he was optimistic, but now he feels betrayed and he does not want to get married. So then Chelsea tries to I love him into taking her back and it worked. Yuck. This is a preview of life outside the cameras. Cut your losses now, Jimmy. It is okay for y'all not to be compatible. Chelsea, you are manipulative and you do not take accountability. Because she was like, well, what can I do for you to say yes? He said, well, you can never do what you did again. And you as well. You did some things as well. Chelsea, you started the entire melee. You started this. Oh, child, this is a fool. If this is what y'all gonna do, then I can already foresee when we get to the reunion, the two of you probably, if you say yes, will still be together and you will divorce shortly thereafter and we will find out in People Magazine. Moving forward. In the next scene, it's a get together on the lake. Baby, everything was going down on the lake. Chelsea, why do you got on that cool rider leather jacket on this lake? <laughs> I need a C O O L A R I D E R. Girl, looking like an extra on grease. If you don't take that damn leather jacket off at this lake. So, AD, Laura, Amy, and Chelsea, they go sit down. AD wants the tea. So, she was like, Listen, I got a scrungy, and you have to have the scrungy before you can talk. AD, it is scrunchy. Like, ch 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 chia. Scrunchy, as in chia pet, as in a chi flat iron. Like, girl, not scrungy. Girl, say, what now? They basically wanted to get the tea and know where uh, Jeremy is. Like, where is he at? Johnny had already told Amy Jeremy's version of the story. And I'm with AD. Ain't nothing for you to be talking about at no 5.30 a.m. I know that's right, honey. Ain't nothing open but legs and IHOP after midnight. Laura said, well, I just feel like she has no respect. You know, she has no respect for other women. Isn't that the pot calling a kettle calling a pot calling a kettle? I just find it ironic that you say that she doesn't have respect for other women. But you know either. She's like, but you know, he's the one that made the commitment to me. He promised to protect me in my heart. Agreed. I agree with that. She tells them when she left, she heard nothing from Jeremy. She doesn't think he ever even cared about her or her feelings. And he has feelings for Sarah Ann that he hasn't quite processed. Side note, Jimmy, you need to keep a hat on. Okay? You need to keep you a hat on. 
And get this, Jeremy walks into the party, right? Laura was acting like she didn't want to see him, but she sure got up and switched seats to be in plain view. I see you, girl. I done played them little games before. So Jeremy is over there blaming Laura for being upset. Sir, you are wrong, period. He said he doesn't want to be with someone that runs away from everything. And I'm pretty sure she doesn't want to be with someone who runs to the arms of another woman. So Jimmy is telling Jeremy, both of y'all are stubborn. So you may not think that it's you, but it's you as well. That smug look on Jeremy's face would piss me off. Because you don't think that you did anything to hurt that woman. So as Jeremy is lying, in walks Trevor, sans mullet. The way that Chelsea pulled down those sunglasses <laughs> to get a better look. Baby, that was funny to me. I said, not you looking at him. Mm-hmm. After Trevor walks in, Jessica and Mackenzie walk in. I said, uh-oh. So all the ladies are there just watching. I said, baby, this is about to be a mess. So Jessica goes over to Jimmy. Now she went in for a handshake, but he hit her with a side hug. Chelsea's stomach is about to be upset in five, four, three, two, one. Why they pan that camera to Chelsea? And she said, I feel like I'm about to throw up. I said, oh my goodness. Child. <laughs> this is a mess. Then Clayto shows up in his that 70s show shirt. Hey, sir. Jessica is over there with Laura talking about, I just am feeling so many things. Like, where is he? Where, where, where is he at? Here go, Laura. Girl, I just love you. You are so funny. Oh, you just love her. But Laura, you said Sarah Ann doesn't respect women. Do you think this right here is cool? Pot, meat, kettle. Jessica's like, oh my God, my heart. Here go, Laura. Jimmy really felt uncomfortable when he saw you. Girl, please. Chelsea comes over and sits with the ladies. Crickets. Why y'all so quiet now? Keep talking about the, you know, your heart in the pit of your stomach. Talk about it. Jessica was making sure to show as much cleavage as possible. Did y'all notice that? I said, baby, you might as well pull them bosoms out. Meanwhile, Laura is low key playing wing woman over there pretending to get a drink. But really, she's trying to usher in Jessica. Laura, that is loser behavior. Despite how I feel about Chelsea, you are really hypocritical. So they go over to talk about how they feel, right? Jessica and Jimmy go over to the side. So JJ is sitting in there talking. She asked if Chelsea met his family. He said, yeah, I mean, that was the easy part, but then we had a huge fight after that. She's like, you know what? I want you to be good to Chelsea. And you know, don't look at it as advice coming from an ex. Girl, are you technically considered an ex? She's like, just think about it as you getting advice from one of her good friends. Girl, please, you need to lose the term friend. If you use it, use it loosely. You do not mean these two people any good. I see straight through you. Jessica tells him, you know, him being silent after reading her letter, the silence was deafening. It was really loud. She also told him how she felt after he told Chelsea that he loved her. He said, you know, it was hard. She said, yeah, but you never did flat out tell me how you felt about me. He then says, I mean, I feel like you're the smartest person I've ever met. Baby, when Chelsea watches this back, if they are still together, baby, that house is going up on a Tuesday. Do you hear me? Oh, it's going to be a mess now. So then he brings up the EpiPen. She was like, yeah, I said you was going to need an EpiPen because your airways were going to close up. But I was the one about to fall out and need a medic. Girl, it's the hat. He's hat fishing you. <laughs> It's the hat, honey. And speaking of fishing, not you fishing for a compliment. Because she was like, yeah, I think I gassed myself up a little bit too much. Now, she was waiting on him to say, no, 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 you're hot. I definitely need an EpiPen. Stat. He ain't say nothing, child. He just moved on to the next thing. She said, you know, I, I even practiced how I was going to shake your hand. He said, well, in reality, you were always my number one. Still. Jimmy, be very for real. Be very for real right now. There is going to be hell to pay when Chelsea sees this. These people suck. And that was the end of episode 10. When we get down to that reunion, oh baby, she is going to have some choice words for Jimmy. Jeremy, you're a loser. Okay, you're a loser. We're going to move into episode 11. Y'all come back for that review. Jeremy, you need some help. Okay, something is wrong with you as well. Jessica, you do not care that she met the family and you do not care how he treats Chelsea and you ain't fooling me. 
Because if you are good friends with Laura, that tells me all I need to know. Y'all comment down below and tell me exactly what you thought about episode 10. Comment and I'm going to comment back. Please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And as always, stay safe, stay blessed, spread love, not germs. Peace.